Welcome everybody. Uh, on the episode today we want to talk about um, troubles with DSG transmission. So previously we've done a video about um, a few fault codes on DSG transmission, especially the 7-speed. And these codes are majorly found on the 7-speed uh, DSG. So we looked at the transmission error code P178B, P177F, P0841, P189C. All these are found on the DSG transmission. So symptoms of this fault or these faults in total, you will notice that there is a little service indicator that will start showing up on your um, instrument cluster, a little spanner that will start blinking, or you'll start seeing all your gear uh, indicators on the clock will start flashing, all of them at the same time. All of them will be highlighted or illuminated, illuminated at the same time. Uh, the other symptom you would find that your car would start shifting hard or your car will start having delayed shifting and then when it becomes worse you will notice now your car uh, will not shift any gears so you will put it into drive nothing happens reverse nothing happens and that would be um, the worst of it all now looking at these faults we looked at these faults um, inside the mechatronic unit this is the seven speed dsg transmission that we've removed from uh, another car so in here, this whole part here is where the mechatronic unit is housed. From another transmission as well, this is how the mechatronic unit is. This is the inside part of it, uh, the inner part of it that goes into the transmission. And this is the outer uh, part of the mechatronic unit. So for those faults, whenever those faults come up, and specifically we want to deal with the one specific one or several ones that would point you to the hydraulic pressure pump which is the hydraulic accumulator inside the mechatronic unit so there's a little accumulator that houses um, mechatronic oil that is the one that is used to actuate uh, the forks in here that would actuate the clutches for the various gears that um, your car would want to shift Mind you, as we mentioned earlier, this mechatronic uh, unit helps this DSG transmission to shift through gears. 7-speed DSG transmission for VW and Audi group units is just a set of, we would say, two gearboxes. One, a 4-speed manual, and the other one, a 3-speed manual, mated together. Uh, then they shift through gears using two separate clutches. So one clutch is for odd gears and the other one is for even gears. So in here you will find, if we turn here, uh, for it here, we've opened it up. If we turn this transmission this side here, you'll see these are the clutch packs. We had already opened them up. This thing is heavy, be careful when you uh, play around with it. So these are the actual clutches. You'll look at it, looks like um, a pressure plate from a manual transmission. In there you'll see the springs for the clutches and then the clutch plates themselves if you can see here these are the clutch plates um, that are used to shift gears so let's focus on the mechatronic unit here so what you need to do if you want to undo the mechatronic unit this is how this transmission will be in your car uh, this is the front of the car just after the radiator you find your transmission where the mechatronic unit is so when you have those faults pointing you to the um, accumulator the hydraulic pump uh, two ways about it. You can either choose to clear everything in front of the car, in front of the mechatronic unit, and get the mechatronic itself out. Or two, you can choose to clear the coolant hose pipes and the wiring harnesses that are around this place, and then just undo this cover here, and then take away the uh, accumulator pump from the mechatronic unit. So getting out the mechatronic unit is as simple as getting out these aluminium uh, bolts. They are not too strong, which means they are not also very tight. So you can just undo them using a um, T45 Tox key. So I had already done that. This one also comes out. This one also uh, would come out. Remember, we have other 10 millimeter uh, bolts that hold the cover for the hydraulic unit in there. So these ones here that we have already undone on this. So for the mechatronic unit, this one, this one, um, there's one here, one would be here as well, and then one here, one here, and then we have 
the last one at the bottom here. Last one at the top here out. And then the mechatronic unit has some lock in there that you will have to wiggle out. This one here that locks into uh, the shifter fox. Then you wiggle it out and then your mechatronic unit comes out like so. So this is the mechatronic unit and this is the back side of it as we see it. Now, this part here is used for the other set of gears, the odd set of gears, the um, even set of gears. So this fork here is moved about. This is the gear selector fork or the gear uh, selector itself. Typically what you find in a manual gearbox. If you look here, you can see actual gears, actual teeth for gears as opposed to the conventional automatic gearbox where you will just have you have planetary gear system of things. A lot of clutch packs and uh, some gears that you will see. So the mechatronic unit will shift this fork depending on the gear that you want. Let's say first and then third and then fifth like so. And then this side here uh, we say second, uh, we say fourth and then sixth and so forth so this um, gear this selector fork will keep moving and engaging gears at different times depending on the speed and the communication between the ecu and the mechatronic unit so the mechatronic unit here on this dsg gearboxes is what replaced this other guy here so this one here is a valve body some people will call it a motherboard uh, for the sense of that motherboard in a computer or an electronic device. So this is the valve body that houses the valve solenoids, these ones here, that would actuate fluid to activate a gear in the normal conventional uh, automatic gearbox like this one here that is here. So this one here, underneath you will find a valve body like this in there. But for DSG, we look at a um, mechatronic unit. So in here, you have now gotten your mechatronic unit out. Now in here, we want to look at the hydraulic pump, which is the accumulator that you find in here. So as we said earlier, you can either get the whole unit out or just get uh, this cover out and then get the uh, actuate accumulator out. So we have 10 millimeter bolts as we had mentioned. Get your 10 millimeter socket or your 10 millimeter wrench and then just undo these bolts here like so and do as well you have your torque wrench uh, or your torque screwdriver like this one here uh, for those who are wondering what number is si what size is that is t27 so you need a t27 torque screwdriver you need a 10 millimeter socket or wrench you don't really need a power tool there are things you can just do by hand and then get the two screws out. So for instance, while doing it on the car, this is how it will be. So after getting all those uh, stud screws out, the cover will come out. And then here is the hydraulic accumulator that is revealed. So this little unit here is the one that houses hydraulic fluid that will accumulate pressure to move around the forks um, uh, or the movements that are found in the mechatronic unit to shift gears so when you have those faults uh, that we mentioned that point you to the hydraulic accumulator uh, hydraulic pressure pump on your vw audi group or any other dsg this would be the um, fault so looking at this one here, so the original one, you would find VW Audi on this, but this unit already had that problem. This is the same unit we did the first video on. So this unit had this problem and then we caught it and came to rescue it, came to sort it. So this one here, this is a Kainago unit. We are not advertising for Kainago, but this is an aftermarket unit that is uprated for that particular reason. So what happens is the unit that VW used in this thing was very fragile. So if you open it up here, um, this is what happened on another transmission. Like if you open it up here, you can look at this one here. So we have this particular housing here, the case where this unit, the hydraulic pump bolts in. 
So the hydraulic pump here, with the pressure that it has on the movements that it, it happens in here, so the pressure becomes so much, sometimes with the vibration, the juddering inside the transmission, the walls of this housing break or they crack. When they crack, they start losing fluid. So your accumulator will start losing fluid. The mechatronic oil that is found in here will now start flowing into your transmission and then you will lose pressure to shift gears. You will lose pressure to actually switch gears, let's say from reverse to drive and so on so that would be the offending unit and that is how you get it out so getting it out is just as good as we have some there's a special tool from vw or some some other people manufacture it so it hooks in here and then you just have to turn this unwind it and then you open it up like so so this is how the hydraulic accumulator uh, looks like for those who know citrons with the um, hydro pneumatic suspension this is the technology that is used in those suspensions. So fluid is accumulated in here and then pressed to make the compressions to move about the forks through these holes. So the fluid is pressed in here and then through these holes goes through the mechatronic unit to go and actuate the forks to move gears. So as we showed you down here, so this wall of this housing bracket here cracks or breaks, hence losing pressure. So when the fluid is compressed in here, and the thing is cracked so you'll start losing fluid into other components and into your transmission instead when you replace this you can see this has been replaced so this outer one is the original housing hydraulic pump housing and then this inner one here is the new one operated that comes with the aftermarket replacement so it's sort of a reinforcement inside the original one so you'll never have this problem again you move ahead into and other issues if they ever happen again or you live happily forever with your transmission that is mostly what happens so you repair the crack you replace the accumulator your transmission is sorted fill up the transmission oil again as well as fill up your accumulator oil which is the mechatronic oil so for these transmissions you have two liters of gearbox oil which is typically a manual transmission uh, fluid that is 75 w90 people call it a cc sometimes um, or any other manual transmission um, oil that you would find on the market and then for this one it has a special type of fluid that is normally just referred to as mechatronic oil it's somehow green in color uh, one liter for this so you have one liter for mechatronic and then two liters of gearbox oil for your actual gearbox so if you're new here and you've got up to this far please make sure to subscribe make sure to click on the notifications to get notified anytime we post a video share it with a friend share it with family thank you